Hello everybody, it's Wasan19 and today I want to bring you a guide for Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord and which workshop is best for each town. A total workshop guide you can find all over YouTube. There's a bunch of them out there and there are some pretty good ones. So I'm not going to bring you all the little nuances that are involved into a workshop. However, the one thing that's really hard to find what is the best workshop for each city? So what I did was, is I went around to each city. And I placed every single workshop that I could, waited, and see what brought in the most profit. For these, I did them right around day 250. So it's somewhere early in the game. That way, it is around the time in which you're building workshops, but it's not too late in the game where things can change dramatically. So a couple things that I do want to run over. When you do create a workshop, you want to look and see what workshops are currently in that city. So when you go into the map, go ahead and hit your Alt key and look. Because there are two things that you are looking for. One is you want to make sure there is not a double workshop in that city. There are some in which they contain two breweries. So in that case, you might want to take one of the breweries and change it to something else so it doesn't cut into your profit. So always double check to make sure that there aren't two of the same workshop. If you plan on making a woodworking shop or a smithy, double check and make sure that a town does not contain both. Both a woodworking shop and a smithy use hardwood. So by having both of them in the city, it can take up some of that hardwood and drive the cost up, which will hurt your profits. Once again, go ahead, buy one of the workshops, change it to something else, and sell it. You will lose money in the deal. However, in the long run, it can help you out. Workshops are one of the most inconsistent and unpredictable things in Banner Lord. There are so many things that go into figuring out how much a workshop makes that you could literally spend an hour or two going through absolutely every nuance of Banner Lord. There are a few things that I want to highlight to you so that you can understand how things can actually drastically change from one day to another. One of the things that can drastically change it is Tail World themselves. Whenever they make a patch, it can completely change things around. So that is why when I say at the time of this recording, it literally means that. Because you could go a month or two down the line and this still works perfectly or it could be completely changed. Another one of the biggest things in deciding is supply and demand. So you want to see what your workshop actually needs. To go into that, all you have to do is go ahead and click on your Kingdom tab to Other and then see a brewery. A brewery needs grain and will give beer. So what you want to do is, is you want to check and see, okay, how much grain is here and then how much is the beer? So if grain is expensive and beer is cheap, you won't make as much money. So you might want to think about possibly giving them some grain to drive down the price and buying all the beer to drive up the beer price. That can actually get you quite a bit by doing that. In some instances, it can double your profits for weeks on end. Armies coming into a town is another way that they can take huge amounts of consumables away and can seriously hurt your profits. So always be weary when you're in an area that has a lot of warring going on. Armies can definitely impact how much you can make. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is town prosperity. The higher the prosperity of the town, the more you're going to make. So that is also a big factor. Caravans is another wild card. 
Caravans are running all over the map. And this is going to tie into something I'm going to tell you. One of the best things that you can make in the game is a silversmith. So you just go walk into a town, put up a silversmith, and you're making a couple hundred a day thinking you're good. The problem is, is most towns will have a little bit of silver. But that silver is easily used up by your silversmith. And when caravans come in, they might buy that silver up as well. So unless you have a supply of silver coming in, those caravans can take those goods, leaving you with nothing, and therefore you have no production. Now we will go through and we will look at each kingdom's towns from the start of the game, and we will classify how much they are going to make. These will come up in three different colors. Red means they average less than 100 a day. Yellow means they average 100 to 199 a day. And green means they average over 200 a day. It's pretty hard to get close numbers because of the way that the, it's so complex and that you can't just narrow it down to one number. So I figured it best to narrow it down in between three different columns to go ahead and try and say, okay, here's what this makes and here's what this makes. The Assyrian, or as other people call it, the Assyri. So the lowest ones you're going to have is going to be Puss and Folk with a brewery, Razi with a brewery. The middle of the road that you are going to have will be Quayaz with a brewery, Sanala with a brewery, Quisara with a brewery, Hubyar with an oil press, Lyakis with a brewery, and Askar with a brewery. Those are for the Asrai. We will now deal with the Kuzite and my favorite. First of all, we will start out with a low one, and that is Wolriri in Makep. It is the worst one. There is no middle of the road in Kuzite territory. All the really good ones you will have is a Wolriri in Akalot. Odaka, Ortengard, Bolt of Hand, and Chocolate. They are all very, very good wool weaveries and some of the best money you can make in the game, and they have been that way for a while. Blandia. With Sargat, you have a brewery. With Jocelyn, you have a tannery. With Charis, you have an oil press. With Galland, a wool weavery. With Cravend, a tannery. And for the good ones, with Oxhall, a brewery. Revolt, a brewery, and with Ostakin, a silversmith. Batania. Starting out at the middle of the road, Penkanak has a tannery. Say a noun, a linen weavery. Dungley's, a brewery. Carbacent, a silversmith, and on the top end is Marinuth with a tannery. Sturgia, middle of the road. Raval has a brewery. Tayal has a wool weavery. And then the next four are all tanneries. Vercheg, Valgard, 
Severe, Varnabopal, they all have tanneries. And the best one is Omar with a brewery. Now we will deal with the Empire. First, the Western Empire. In the middle of the road, we have Zayanica with a brewery, Jomaris with a brewery, Amitatis with a brewery, and Legata with a tannery. Really good ones, Ortizia, a silversmith, and Rattel with a tannery. With the Northern Empire, middle of the road, we have Argoron with a brewery, Emprella linen weavery, and the good ones, Epicrotia with a brewery, Diathma with a silversmith, Mysaea with a wool weavery, and Sinopa with a brewery. And finally, the Southern Empire, middle of the road, Poros with a tannery, Volstrom with a brewery, Vizian with a wool weavery, and Serenia with a brewery. The good ones are Onira with a wool weavery, and Lycaron with a wool weavery, and Denostica with a wool weavery. Those are, at this moment in recording, the best workshops for each city in the game. As I said, there are so many factors that can change this at any time, but as of right now, that is a good starting point for you to go into as to whether or not they are good. All these were just put in, let run for an entire month to see if it could sustain it. And that is why you see so many breweries because there is so much grain out into the world that it is almost a default thing to say, I'll put it here. If you see over three or 400 grain in a city, it's safe to say you're going to go ahead and you're going to be able to make some money on it. If you don't want to micromanage too much, but you want to help your workshop out just a little bit, go in from time to time and buy the product that it's making. Buy the beer or go ahead and buy the jewelry out of there. It will really help drive up that price. I will try to do these for every single branch. So that way when the 1.5.7 goes to the live branch, they will have this as a reference and I will try to do 1.5.8 as well. I'll do my best to do it. It takes about three days to get this video done because you have 53 towns, you have 11 different workshops, that's almost 600 things to test. So it takes an extremely long time to actually get these numbers. But I will try to do my best to give you these through each patch. I hope this helps. As always, take care and thanks for watching.